double, double toil and trouble. Some topics discussed may make people uncomfortable. For fair is foul and foul is fair. On this podcast, we will definitely swear. A lot. Now round the cauldron go, trigger warnings listed in the notes below. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined, the cocktails cry, it's time, it's time. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Maiden, mother, crone. Plot twist, we're all the crone. The stories aren't all made up and the points don't matter. Welcome listeners to The Weird Sisters, a podcast about the blurst and bizarre and all the things you were happier not knowing about. Hey, hags. Hello. What's up? <laughs> How we doing? Uh, hot. Yes, it was particularly warm this uh, Australian afternoon. Yes. Yeah, I'm very sweaty. Mm-hmm. I'm a very moist person in general, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Continuously swampy, Yeah. some would say. Yeah, I'm one of those. I'm like the swamp hag. Fuck, what an <laughs> opener. <Wow. laughs> Excellent. How am I? I am not drunk enough. Uh, yeah, it is It is a Thursday today. So naturally, the mm. latter half of the week and everyone should be drinking heavily mm. in Australia. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a national pastime. Yeah. Froppies, froppies, froppies. Maybe um, we should uh, tell the people who's listening who we are. Oh, well, I'm Tay. <laughs> Hello. 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 I can't think of anything cool to say about myself. I've been put on the spot. I Look, <laughs> you're a very cool human, so that's fine. Oh, You'll just bless. naturally be cool, even if you don't tell people that. Um, I'm Laura, and I'm the sweaty, the sweatiest one of us all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't smell good ever. <laughs> I'm Lacey. I'm the only one of us without facial piercing. And no. So and... no metal has penetrated your face? No, just no my... Metal. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on. <laughs> well, I well, love it. Well, metal penetrates. <laughs> right, well, this week, our uh, topic is superstitions. Mm. Very superstitious. Yeah, yes, superstitious. Because this is coming out on Friday the 13th. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's usually my luckiest day. It yeah. Exactly. I don't just have shit luck the rest of the year. Well, it can happen up to three times a year. It can. It's not yeah. bad. Mm-hmm. Happens every year, but sometimes maybe three times. Yeah. Three out of three, six, five, and not. It's not. It's bad. It's probably. It's a little bad. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> odds. Um, please don't gamble, ever. Oh, no, I don't gamble. Mm-hmm. No, it's fair. Uh, you have a story for us, Tay. I do have a story. So, uh, this little uh, exposition at the start. Uh, so, when I was a kid, uh, my grandfather had a lucky rabbit's foot on his car keys. Uh, it was missing tops of fur. It was particularly gross, it was tarnished uh, and worn, the little fixing it was uh, attached to. Um, but I was fascinated by it, this uh, gross thing hanging off my granddad's car keys. I don't know why he had it, and when I asked, he simply just said, it's for luck. <laughs> Is it a real foot? I, to this day, I have no idea. I always thought they were fake. I assumed mm-hmm. they had to be, but I'm slowly realising they probably weren't. Yeah. 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 There was a kid at uh, like high school that had a lucky rabbit's foot. Mm. Oh, was all the feet lucky? He was not popular. Mm. Yeah. Sweet dude, though. Yeah. And, like, I asked, always asked him, like, why? Why, why, why is it lucky? But, like, I don't think he even knew why it was lucky. Uh, (laughs) Luckily, as an adult, I have access to the internet. Um, So I chose, on this aptly themed episode, to find out why these tokens are lucky and how they're preserved. Um, So why are they lucky? Well, the Celts back in, like, 600 BC uh, thought rabbits were lucky because of their burrows, so they could burrow down into the earth and uh, commune with the underworld, because they were much closer. I believe That's... your rabbit fully communes with the underworld. Yeah. yeah, he would. He's a little black void who's a piece of shit and yeah. talks to Satan all the time, I'm sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> so why he's in his strawberry, just communing with yeah. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His eyes glowing red inside the straw. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, well, much later, uh, especially in like Afro-American law, uh, the foot's luck was thought to be related to a rabbit's reproductive vigor. Oh, uh, oh so, so your granddad wanted to get down. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so the foot, like, uh, is basically a fertility token, which is kind of buck wild. That is weird. Yeah. Like, I get it. They are prolific humpers. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a problem with... Barnaby's humping. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get it. I see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for a rabbit's foot to be lucky, it is believed that the rabbit in question had to be killed in a particular way, at a particular time, in a particular place by a particular person, as with all <laughs> sweet little tokens from history are. Um, a lot of the articles I read said that it had to be done in a cemetery on a Friday. 
um, Friday the 13th. <gasps> Coincidence? I think oh. we Shall we kill Barnaby tonight? No! <laughs> he'll come back. That's yeah. why I'm more scared. He'll, he'll, he'll rise. He'll just float. Um, so people with, like, crossed eyes or, like, a limp were um, also mentioned as, like, people that are, like, it's more preferable that they do I the have deed. a limp right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Why? I have a pinched nerve in my back. Oh, Christ. Oh. And so my whole leg is numb. You mm. really are a little old crone. Oh. 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 Fucking old crone. Um, and the foot in question, as you asked earlier, uh, it must always be the back left foot. Oh. So that's the one that's lucky. I feel like left is a very reoccurring thing with things that are lucky or unlucky. It's always like a yeah. left hand thing. In Australia, mm-hmm. it is law mm-hmm. that if you are going to take a piss outside, mm-hmm. that you can only do it on the left front tire of your car yeah. or your horse. I really? thought you meant law as in like, Ooh, no, no, law, fully, but it's law like, as in LAW. The law. Oh, the law. Yeah. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> so much I don't know about Wait, my did own you say country. piss on the left front side of your horse? Yep. Oh, okay. Like the, the poor the, horse. The or, left or the, wheel the, of the, the horse. All the time. <laughs> yep. Just imagining that this, is, like, one leg of your white horse, like, just pissed in yellow. Well, Yikes. yeah, my dad always told me... I'm not sure how he's... He obviously thinks I piss outside a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad always told me, because, like, if you need to go have a whiz and you piss, like, anywhere outside your car, that's public urination. But if you piss on the tyre, police can't get you for public urination. Ooh. That's... I wonder if that's still a thing. That's No, nuts. it fully, fully is. What? Yes. Well, it doesn't help... Fun? us because one like we don't drive if you can aim on the front of your <laughs> tire yeah. it's like fuck as no. a lady <laughs> well done mm-hmm. just like i have seen some women cheerleader who do style that. like yeah, yeah. Your legs. <laughs> oh, yeah exactly straight up stunning um yeah so that's what i thought was particularly interesting get back left that is front cool. left tire even left tire. <laughs> um so this is this shook me this is a great piece of info that i found um oh, so it's believed that the lucky rabbit's foot is an extension of something called the hand of glory <gasps> have we heard of the hand of glory yes! oh good i'm so glad um so you're gonna love this yes! uh so for those at home that don't know uh the the hand of glory is the hand of a hanged man that has been pickled uh it also is the left hand the left hand is preferred again oh. left motifs um or whichever hand committed a murder I mean, like, how can you tell? Like, if you strangle with both hands, they're they're both, both are they both good? Potentially, you get two for one. Yeah, what if you're like yeah. two knife Larry or something? You just stab them with both hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The double sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> double yeah. arc even. Hell yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So it gets better. Worse? No better. It gets better. Okay. Uh, the hand was often accompanied by a candle made of the fat of the hanged man, <gasps> and the hair was used as the wick. Yeah. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah, so the hand would be displayed with the candle resting in its palm. Uh, and that's some great pictures online there. I uh, highly recommend. Good story feel. Yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah, so back to the rabbit's foot. I found a WikiHow article on how to make one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so for those at home that are a little squeamish with the uh, discussion of taxidermy and how to preserve a rabbit, maybe not the best... Uh, subject to listen to. You know an unusual number of people who perform taxidermy? Like, more than you really ought to know, mm-hmm. I feel like. <laughs> How many people? Um, enough people that, like, they have made an online Facebook group for it. Oh, Yeah. Big community. <laughs> yeah, like that it. I follow now, because why not? I oh. have some weird skulls in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tend to make friends with people who have weird professions. Yeah. yeah. A lot of death care professionals are morticians. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I still, like, obviously, I've told you guys about the story of my mate who was a mortician in training. Yes. Um, oh, yes. yes. So the listeners at home, please do tune in for this one. Oh, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is, I'm repeating what she's told me. Someone's going to probably fucking tell us, like, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> but uh, in Queensland, which is where she was an apprentice i don't know what you would call yeah, them. Yeah. Apprentice. yeah i feel like you have to go through an apprenticeship to work with dead bodies i feel like you can't mm-hmm. just be any like idiot off the street to be like i'm gonna go and fondle dead people yeah. <laughs> um yeah she uh when you bury someone the plot is not eternal it's not yours forever it's yours for a set amount of time and if your family continues to pay for it it'll be yours for as long as they do but it's rented. It's not your land. Uh, so when people stop paying rent or their rent payment runs out, um, then they go and dig them up. 
and move them somewhere so that they can put someone else in that piece of land. So old caskets are obviously made of wood. So if you go and dig up someone because it's no longer been paid for, it's been 20 years, say, for example, and you pull up the casket, it's usually rotten, and you'll pick it out of the ground and the bottom will fall out. And Mm -mm -mm. the bones of that person left behind will just boop on the ground. Um, But new caskets aren't like that, apparently. New caskets are metal lined. Because for some reason, people think that's better. I don't know why you would want that. But uh, so when you go and dig up a metal casket and you pick it up, what's inside hasn't been allowed to decay the normal way and get eaten by the stuff and seep into the earth. So it's a soup with some chunky bone bits inside of it that bang against the side of the coffin as you move it. It's a boy stew. Oh, Oh. it is a boy stew. Um, But I always thought that was very cool and very gross. Mm. I really like it. I don't understand why you'd want a metal coffin. Is it like maybe it's a regulation But like, you know, in all the US, like movies and TV shows, they always have caskets. Yes. Here in Australia, every fucking funeral I've been to, coffin. Are they different? Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh. dude, yes. I didn't know that. So the coffin is like, has like a proper shape, right? And then the casket is just a full um, rectangle. Just a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the the bars. Yeah. Carrying bars. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, I didn't know that. I thought they were literally the same thing, just interchangeable terms for it, and some of them look different than others. You can get like lead lined coffins. Mm. Um, I've heard that. So, who was. Didn't they need lead lined coffins for a lot of the victims of. um, like nuclear meltdowns and things like that. They put concrete on top of them. But, uh, so they don't sure. leach into the... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But also they're lined if for, um, for example, for forensic reasons. Actually, one of the uh, victims of the Titanic was saved be- um, to be identified because of the lead lined coffin. Wait, what do you mean? I don't understand. What does the lead lining have to do with... It stops the decay. Oh! And so the bones were able to be... Oh! Um, DNA tested. That's really cool. And that's how they found out who he was. He oh. was he was the unknown child, but then oh. they found his name. That's lovely. really cool. Yeah, I've been to that cemetery. That's really cool. It's really awesome. That's mm. really cool. <sighs> anyway, Tell us how anyway, to make a rabbit's foot. <laughs> All right, so squeamish beware, but um, it is a WikiHow article with some excellent uh, hand-drawn little like oh. diagrams oh. on how to cure a rabbit's foot. Uh, so verbatim, uh, rabbit's feet have long been thought of as lucky charms, particularly the rear left foot. If you hunt rabbits or want to make use of as much of the carcass as possible, it's easy to cure a foot and use it as a lucky charm. You can keep it for yourself or give it as a gift to a friend. (laughs) So first step is curing the foot in rubbing alcohol. So clean the foot. uh, Oh, I have that. (laughs) (laughs) Making a mental checklist in case Barnaby's a little shit today. If you have a rabbit's foot that you have got from a local farmer or from a rabbit that you have shot yourself, you can cure it using uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, The first step is to thoroughly clean it to make sure all the dirt, the blood, and any little parasites in the fur are dealt with. Yikes. Um, And then you submerge it in rubbing alcohol. The next step is to submerge. Uh, And let it sit for 48 hours. You should use 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can buy this online or from a hardware store or a big supermarket. (laughs) (laughs) Place the foot into a jar and then pour in the rubbing alcohol. Make sure the foot is completely submerged and then screw on the lid. You may also use a Ziploc bag, but make sure it is secure and there are no leaks. No. <laughs> Who doesn't have a fucking jar to hand, yeah. though? Okay. Like, it's fine. I mean, like, judging me. Yeah, no, I don't have many jars to hand. I don't know. Um, a lot of parts. I have a small house. Are yeah. you making jam for everybody this Christmas? I have to Christmas? buy the jam jars. I just have jars. <laughs> it's got to be clean. Um, so then you... After 48 hours have passed, we rinse off the foot uh so return to the foot remove it from the alcohol and give it a good rinse um yeah squeezing the feet will help you get out any alcohol that is seeped deeper into the fur you can feel all the little bits oh jesus (laughs) keep the alcohol for next time there is no need to throw away the alcohol if you intend to cure another rabbit's foot in the future (laughs) why not have a fucking operation set up yeah a little like assembly line of just jars of rabbit (laughs) Um, and then we have to wash it in sodium tetraborate solution or borax. I have this too! Yeah. <laughs> um, so you put it in uh, the borax uh, after you rinse it off. Uh, in the US, it is common to use borax, a detergent booster, and this is sodium tetraborate. Amazing. Um, you should be able to find the equivalent in a laundry section of your local supermarket in a new jar or Ziploc bag or another container. Mix 15 parts warm water to one part sodium tetraborate. Uh, stir the powder into the water well and leave in the jar 
with the foot uh, for 24 hours to give time to work on the dehydrating of the skin and tissues. Delightful. Mm. Yum. Um, then we rinse it off, uh, leave it to dry. After a day is passed, remove the foot from the solution and thoroughly rinse off, being sure to work out any of the remaining solution from the fur. Uh, wash the foot in warm water until you feel the grittiness of the borax completely removed. Rub the foot dry and leave it out to dry completely in the air. You can dry out a foot in the sun or inside. A foot should dry out in a day or so and then you'll have a cured rabbit's foot. And that's it? Yeah, and then you just cap it off uh, and you're done. Put basically. it on the keychain. Yeah. Holy the graphics shit. are so silly. <laughs> they are very silly. Um, that's a big rabbit's foot. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> But also, like, someone had to draw those graphics. Yeah. Which I think is exceptionally funny. I find it really sad that of all the things that I'm required to make a rabbit's foot, I don't have the jar. It's That's quite, the thing yeah. I'm missing. <laughs> um, and just to close off, there's a very famous quote uh, that I found. It's quite funny. I uh, had a good chuckle at this one. Uh, Believe in the lucky rabbit's foot if you will, but remember that it didn't work out for the rabbit. Oh yeah. Yeah. So are they really good luck charms? I don't think so. Probably not. I don't like it. I'm yeah. very sad. Mm. It is like that's the one that we get the saddest as the animal one. This is very sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like murder of people and totally fine. Yeah. people and it's does fine, don't no worry. I don't want the dog to die. Or mm -hmm. well, the rabbit in this case. That mm -hmm. makes me sad. So have you got something uplifting for us? Yeah. I would not call it uplifting. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> Alright, my cunts, have you heard about <laughs> Friday the 13th. Oh, son. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since it is Friday the 13th, I thought I'd look at why is it important? Mm -hmm. Why is mm -hmm. it special? Why is it unlucky? Or lucky for some people. Uh, like you, three days of the year potentially that apparently shit goes right for you. <laughs> no, like incredibly right. Oh. <laughs> incredibly right. I remember when I was at school, um, like church was cancelled, I got like to wear like my, my shortest skirt and nobody yelled at me oh. um maths was cancelled um and like yeah just just good shit happened for me on those mm -hmm. days terrible things that, yeah very right wearing your shortest skirt nice. look you don't understand how lucky <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah i was just talking to someone the other day about the fact that you went to an all girls boarding school a religious all girls boarding me? school yeah oh no they were dudes Oh, were they? Where do you think Rowan came from? I don't know. Hmm. For some reason, I thought it was all girls. No, no, it's dudes as well. The fact that they let like children of different sexes mix in a lonely they boarding didn't, house. They did not. Just they did not. I saw. I, am. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck him in a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he lived in my room for a point. Um, That's really funny. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> I guess I'll tell you why then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's actually been considered bad luck for not that long, only since the Middle Ages, which oh. seems like a long time. But it's a really history, fucking long time. I mean, like in human history, it's not that long. It's a blip. Yeah. This is a sweet, sweet little... Um, so it has links to the Last Supper. Uh, so with 13 people present, one of which was Judas. That's uh, such a cool name, though. I like the name Judas, too. I like the name Judas in the Lady Gaga song, and uh, I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oof, I have a big thing for her. Um, yeah, so Judas, Jesus' betrayer, in case anyone doesn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but the last sukkah took place on a Thursday, so Jesus crucified the following day, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and there's also something to do with the Arisian calendar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that oh. right. It's uh, I believe it's to do with the Jewish faith. Oh, very shaky on my knowledge about that. But basically, it's like the 13th day of the okay. first month or the 13th. I don't know. But anyway, there's a lot of 13s involved there. Cool. Um, but the other thing that it might have had to do with is uh, Friday the 13th of October in 1307. Uh, so the then King of France, Philip IV, arrested hundreds of Knights Templar. Do you guys know what that is? Yes. Hell yeah. Sweet. Well, basically, for anyone who doesn't, I knew of them. I didn't know what they were. Um, it's basically a Christian military order. Uh, and at the time, they had a lot of perks that people weren't happy they had. Uh, and they were gruesomely tortured into confessing basically everything from homosexuality, which was been seen back then. Not a problem, but a big sin then. Um, to devil worship hmm. and spitting on the cross, which I thought was like, okay. But apparently it was a big deal. So the Knights Templar were burned at the stake, uh, along with their elderly Grand Master, Jacques de Molay. Oh, what a name. I know, right? Oh. Oh. Jacques. 
Uh, and he was a badass about it, though. Uh, so he was defiant right until the end. He basically asked to be tied with his hands together in prayer facing the Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, and they put him to the torch. He called out, God knows who is wrong and who has sinned. Soon a calamity will occur, uh, occur, occur to oh. those who <laughs> condemned us to death. I keep fucking up my quotes. Um, <laughs> it, sounded, the, it sounded French. Yeah, it sounded French. Oh, quoi. Uh, so within the year, both King Philip and the Pope, who had condemned the Knights Templar, were dead. Nice. It's pretty brutal. Uh, King Philip died in a hunting accident, which I thought was kind of interesting because it's just not a normal death. Um, yeah, so there's a specific word for having an irrational fear of Friday the 13th. It is paraskevi deca triophobia. Huh. I don't know how to say that without breaking it up into okay. pieces. That's fair. Uh, I listened to a lot of shit online on how to pronounce it, and it was very confusing. So that's how we're going to say it. Um, but in the US, they actually estimate like 17 to 21 million people are frightened of that day. Oof, like, a yeah, a lot of them are genuinely so frightened that they can't do anything. They can't go outside. Didn't help one dude. He stayed in bed all day on Friday the 13th because of this fear, and his bed fell through six floors. <laughs> Gee, my jaw just cracked from distal. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> from horror. Um, so yes, that's that's the little bit of history about it. But I wanted to tell you a couple of stories I found about really creepy or messed up things that happened on Friday the thirteenth. Yes, please. Uh, you probably know most of these stories because you are both creepy people like me. Mm -hmm. But did you know that happened on Friday the thirteenth? Thirteenth. Thirteenth. I didn't. Don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. <laughs> so, um, have you guys heard of Kitty Genovese? <gasps> no yes! way! No way! Yes. So, oh. Susan Kitty Genovese was murdered in plain sight on Friday the 13th of March in 1964. And she's the reason that we have the bystander effect. Oh, it's her! Yes! Oh. Yes! So, uh, it's a really famous murder. Um, basically, uh, in the 30-meter walk, like, it's such a short walk. It's 30 meters from her car. She, it was late at night because she worked at a bar and she's going home. Uh, but people were awake. Like, people were around. Uh, in the 30-meter walk between her car and the door of her queen's apartment, she was stabbed 14 times. She screamed the whole time, supposedly actually shrieking, oh, my God, he stabbed me. Help me. Uh, up to 30 people witnessed this crime. Like, they heard it or they, like, leaned out the window. One guy was like, leave that girl alone, out the window. Uh, um, and it was later found that those might have been over-exaggerated how many people witnessed this, but a lot. Uh, and no one came to her aid. Uh, her attacker actually left and came back 10 minutes later and then raped and stabbed her again. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Um, and she died on the way to the hospital an hour after she was attacked. Uh, I don't want to tell you his name. You can find out who it is, but I just think that she is the most important no. part of this crime. Okay, I have something to add for that. Ooh, tell us. She's got something. So, the people in the apartment complex, the majority of them were immigrants. Mm -hmm. They survived the Holocaust. Uh, oh. So they had probably seen worse or similar, and they knew not to step out of line. Calling the police was something that they could never do back home. I've never heard that before. And they did, so not, they did not know that that was okay, and that oh, the police wow. so funny were on their side. Yeah. Like, obviously, they would have experienced a Holocaust, but it was quite a distance. This is 1964, so, mm. like, it still was traumatising them that like, obviously it would. Yeah. yeah. But that's intense. That's so, so crazy. Intense. Like, yeah. 20 years later, you'd still be like, it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just leave it be. Yeah. Someone else will help, or if yeah. they don't help, she's on her own. Yeah. And she was so beautiful as well. Pictures. Yeah. I've seen pictures of her. She was gorgeous. Had a beautiful smile. Yeah. It's mm. really fucking sad. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so... Sorry, Kitty. Uh, we hope you're better off now. Her last name is amazing. I know, right? I hope I am pronounce that right probably not but, um speaking of you you're going on a cruise soon right <laughs> Lacey yeah is this correct <laughs> this is correct excellent mm -hmm. you've probably heard of this as well because you both are weird fiends for cruise ship things yeah um, we love a sinking ship you do <laughs> I do too so send me those as well <laughs> do you know the Costa Concordia Yes, that's uh, my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> my favourite. Friday the 13th of January 2012. This is fucked. This is really messed up. So it was a cruise ship, the Costa Concordia. Uh, she deviated off her route in Tuscany and ran into a reef which left a 50 metre long hole in her side. Like, massive. Oof. 
The reason that they ran into this fucking reef was because the captain had turned off the ship's alarm system and was navigating by sight, claiming he knew the seabed well because he'd been there three or four times before with this ship. He also <laughs> supposedly wasn't wearing his glasses, and I'm fucking serious. The first mate was like, in court later, was like, the captain left his glasses in the cabin and was asking me to read the radar for him. The radar? Yeah. <laughs> the thing that is like a foot in front of his face? Uh-huh. And the reef, which is probably like a hundred meters away from his face? Guys. Yeah, the captain gets worse. <laughs> the, the captain, the whole transcript of the captain and the, um, the coast guard <gasps> is so bad. the most fun, fantastic thing. But it's Ever. also horribly sad. Uh, great. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Why? He's such a fucking coward. He just won't go back to the ship. Yikes. Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, so the Costa Concordia overturned an hour after the collision with 4,252 people on board, oh which is God. a massive number. And considering, like, the casualties, I was actually quite impressed because... There are really terrifying videos online. Um, there are videos of crew members telling passengers, everything's fine. Get back in your cabin. Nope. It's okay. Like, less than 30 minutes before they were given the order to abandon ship. Um, people jumped. Like, they just jumped off the fucking side because they weren't launching lifeboats. The captain wouldn't do it. Uh, so they actually, like, a lot of the junior staff members, the junior crew and the second captain basically had a mutiny and started preparing lifeboats launching lifeboats because the captain waited so long a lot of lifeboats were underwater they couldn't be launched oh my god so it literally went onto its oh, side sorry. and also they couldn't be launched because the way the lifeboats they go out yes. and they go down and then because the angle of the ship yeah. the lifeboat was useless yes it was literally on its side um, and it was sort of sitting on a shelf because they didn't have the uh, the run aground and then just stop there they kept going like oh. out into deeper water um, and ended up on this sort of shelf with a big ass drop off next to it. It's really crazy when you look at pictures, which I highly recommend, by the way. Um, but yeah, so didn't fail, launch the lifeboats, people jumped into the water, so I'm sure people drowned doing that. Um, and the, the captain left the ship. The captain bailed before the ship was evacuated. Uh, and you're right, the Coast Guard was telling him, and another captain from another ship that came to rescue people were like, get the fuck back on the ship yeah. get back on board what are you doing and he was like oh mm, i can't no no and then he just didn't he never went back on board oh my god 32 people 32 passengers and crew and one salvage member so 33 people all up actually died a salvage a salvage member oh my yeah gosh, i couldn't find much crew. about that but um i figured these stories we're going to probably end up doing a bigger podcast on them individually Agreed. so i tried to sort of gloss over and not take away the really small i hesitate to say fun but they are fun <laughs> details uh, out of that so i didn't find out about how the salvage crew member died mm. um but that's really fucked up and really sad yeah next next yeah. uh you probably won't have heard of this one if you have i will be impressed okay mm -hmm. So this is actually going back to 1829, so oh. quite a while. Okay. Um, there's this American daredevil. I, I don't really want to call him that. He's called Sam Patch. Is it the Niagara Falls? Yes, but Niagara Falls is involved, but it's not what did him in. So he's entertaining the nation by just jumping off big shit into water. Like, this is the this is how boring this is the 1800s yeah. where there's a dude that jumps off shit, and you're like, I'll go see that. Yeah. Um, and they called him the Yankee Leaper, creative. Uh so he started off jumping off dams for his friends, and then eventually his friends were like, you're crazy, I'm not doing this anymore, you're going way too high. Um, and he came to publish interest, like, publish public interest, when there's this, like, big bridge being installed at the Passiac Falls, uh, and it's 25 metres high. And there's a ledge there already, and they're installing the bridge on top of it. And... He just jumps off it in front of all these people and there's evidently nothing to fucking do because there was a crowd watching the bridge get installed mm. and they're just like, oh, all right, good show. Yeah. That was interesting. <laughs> um, they liked it. They, so he did it more. He did it again and again. And eventually he actually jumped off of Niagara Falls. Uh, it was a 38 meter jump. Pretty massive. I mean, I don't even really like the look of a two meter jump. Okay. I'm like, oh, water mm -mm. no, 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 no. Um, a lot of the, like, advertising for it, because they really advertised the shit out of this guy, uh, was like, no man and how animal has ever survived the falls. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on Friday the 13th of November, Patch drummed up a crowd of thousands to watch his last jump of the season, which is really, 
a bit on the nose, his last jump. Uh, and this time from the Genesee Falls in Rochester. I have no idea if I pronounced that right. Mm-hmm. But he recently had acquired a pet bear. Just, no. Just yeah. acquired the he bear. just had one. Don't know how or why. But he had a pet bear and he was having it. He, like, said it was jumping with him. But basically he would push it over the falls, see if it survived, and then would jump after it. What a cunt. Yeah, I know. So a lot of my, like, sympathy for this guy instantly was like, oh, I don't give a shit about you yeah. anymore. What a surprise. Um, because I obviously value animals more than people, because I'm an asshole. Please tell me the bear just eats him. Well, we never hear about the bear again, so I have no idea what happened to the bear. I'm very sorry. He lived a good long life in the Russian wilderness. I hope he inherited all of Patch's shit, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so he'd done this jump before, but on the 13th, witnesses suggested that Patch was pretty drunk. (laughs) He actually gave a speech comparing himself to Napoleon before climbing (laughs) on his platform. Oh my god. Yeah, he was something like... Napoleon did all this shit, but he never jumped off the Genesee Sea Falls or Jenny Sea Falls. So, Fuck I'm Sam Patch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he leapt, but partway through the jump, he looked like he was actually drooped before hitting the water, and then he never resurfaced. His remains were found downstream four months later. Four months? Half eaten yeah. by a bear. I fucking hope so, hey. And shaped chomps all up his legs. So I have one more big story, and then I've got a few little ones to finish us off, but Whoa. this one really fucked me up, and I really hope we do a big old episode of this one sometime because Done. you've definitely heard about this most people have um even if they're not really sure much about it but the 13th of october 1972 the uruguayan air force flight 571 <gasps> or 571 crashed into the andes mountains while cl- carrying 45 people always tasty <laughs> yeah so this could actually have something to do with our last episode yeah. but uh i thought shawnee bean was pretty crazy and i'd heard of this one before but not I hadn't heard all of it. It's a massive, massive entry on Wikipedia that was very interesting to go through. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes when you're scrolling through cool things on Wikipedia and you're like, I'm kind of not interested in all these logistics. Every single fucking word of this entry was just wrapped. So interesting. Um, But yeah, so 19 members of it were actually an amateur rugby team uh, and they became quite famous afterwards but 17 people died in the initial crash and many more died during the next few days because of injuries obtained during the crash one guy was actually in a coma for three days oh so um the search for the missing plane was called off eight days later uh and the survivors actually heard it they had a transistor radio they couldn't get any signal out but they could hear what was happening and they called off the search so between 27 people they had eight chocolate bars a tin of mussels Three tiny jam jars, a tin of almonds, a packet of dates, candies, dried plums, and a few bottles of wine. And that is literally it. That is it. They couldn't even actually make water for a while because it was so cold and the snow was so deep that they couldn't melt anything. It was frozen. Uh, so they finally, one guy figured it out. He kind of MacGyvered a lot of shit for mm. them. <laughs> but uh, one man ate a single peanut that was covered in chocolate over eight days. Like, somehow. Oh um, so they they tried to eat, like, the lining of the airplane seats. They knew this shit was, like, leather that had been treated in chemicals that would make them really sick, and they were like, there's nothing here. They were on a glacier. It's not a mountain with, like, grass and shit. It's a glacier. No plants, no animals, nothing. And they're trying to eat this stuff that they knew was poisonous and would kill them because there was nothing else. Oh, and they know they're going to starve to death, and they're all uh, Roman Catholics, I believe, um, or at least deeply religious Christians. Oh, so they've, they've eaten you know the body of christ Mm -hmm. so that's fine for them yeah Yeah. well um and it was a big deal for them uh and they all agreed that if they died the others could eat their bodies before that happened though they had to make this agonizing decision whether or not to eat the family and friends who had died already because it was a tiny plane there was only 45 people a lot of them were from this football team they all knew each other oh one guy managed to protect his mother and sister like from being consumed um but it was just awful because the longer they waited the weaker they got the more likely they were going to die in that mountain they knew someone had to go they couldn't just sit there anymore no one was looking for them no one was searching for them um they went through absolute hell they were all injured they were watching their fans and friendly and friends die around them they experienced avalanches they had to dig themselves out of it was just awful like people died so many different times through awful things not just like passing away in your sleep from starvation but horrible awful deaths not that that isn't uh so they finally managed to find their own rescue they sent two dudes out into the snow and finally of the initial 27 survivors out of 45 who boarded the plane only 16 survived 
I had no idea. Like, I knew about this, but not, like, all the little intricate details of the horrifics. That's such a broad stroke. And, yeah. And the, and the guy in the coma, how he got out of the coma was because of the snow that was packed around his head, cooled down his swollen brain so that he regained. Oh my I didn't god. know that. Oh my god. My well, dad reads me out the most fucked oh, up things. Love it. Thank you, and dad. And then just goes back to his breakfast. Yeah. I'm just like, context, please. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, uh, he woke up and saw his sister pass away of her injuries a couple of days later. Um, but yeah, that's so interesting. Highly recommend looking into that. Uh, but a few short ones. Yeah. Finish us off. Tupac Shakur died on the 13th of September, not September, September, 1996, a week after he was shot. Uh, at 1313 13 p.m., which is 1.13 p.m., on August 13th, 2010, a 13-year-old boy was struck by lightning in England and survived. Ooh. Friday the 13th, 1969, the Chicago Cubs lost a baseball game to the New York Mets after a black cat ran on the field. Oh. There's really cute gifts of it. <laughs> <laughs> just these people like oh no oh, looking no. miserable and then this little cat going Meh. <laughs> I feel like in sports as well like just the whole superstition thing is like sports and chips 100% up there yeah yeah very high um so yeah I got my all my information today came from a couple of different sources uh there was obviously all the wikipedia pages of Kitty Genovese Friday the 13th in general Sam Patch the Costa Concordia and the Uruguayan Air Force flight flight um, also, Atlas Obscura, they did a really good article on Sam Patch. Love Atlas Ooh, Obscura. So good. Uh, and then also Esquire did a cool article on Friday the 13th stories. So they gave me some ideas of what to cover. Lovely. Thanks, guys. Mm, well done. <laughs> well done. So bringing it back. What have you got for us? Mm. Um, the Lottery Curse. I Ooh. think I know what this is. I do not. Ah, okay. So you would think winning the lottery would be the solution to all your problems. Um, but a lot of people have been struck down by what has been dubbed the lottery curse. With the best luck they ever had led to divorce, bankruptcy, suicide, and even murder. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. So some unlucky bastards, um, <laughs> for an example. Deborah MacDonald, uh, in 2010, she won eight grand on a TV game show. That night, she went out to celebrate with friends at a bath. She had a couple of drinks, and she was walking down the road. She was hit by a car and killed instantly. Oh. But what was fucked was she just recorded the TV show that day. Yeah. So that show wasn't going to be shown until about 15 days <gasps> later. Oh. And they still showed it? Yeah. Oh. But it's just, like... New disclaimer. Did she, this now, did. She did. Yeah, she did now. So, like... Oh. As a millennial, a grand is literally the lottery. Like, it's so know. much. But in the grand scheme of things, with, like... When you think of a lottery or winning, eight grand is not much. No. I mean, it means well. it would make, like, all your bills oh, yeah. just be easy. Like, debt problems. You can go on a holiday. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be, like, life-changing. No. You know, it just makes stuff easier. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. Tina and Colin Halford from Tamworth in the UK won a $1.1 million pound jackpot. Wow. Seven weeks after the win... Colin was diagnosed with a red blood disease and he died that January. Oh. So they won in October and he died in January. Oh Jesus my God. Christ. Yeah. Cool. Living it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is the story of Abraham Shakespeare. What an oh, This is what I was thinking of when you said about this. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I was attracted to the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. So Abraham Shakespeare had a troubled past. His criminal conviction started as a juvenile with driving offences, theft, failure to pay child support, the usual shit, really. Yeah. Um, oh. He never graduated high school and was either completely illiterate or very close to it. So on November 15, 2006, uh, Shakespeare and his co-worker Michael Ford were headed in, in toward uh, Miami. They stopped briefly at a convenience store to buy cigarettes and drinks. Ford got out of the truck, asked Shakespeare if he wanted a soda. Shakespeare instead asked Ford to buy him two lottery tickets. Uh, he paid for $2 for the tickets out of the $5 he had on him that day. He won $30 million. Oh! oh that is crazy. fucking life-changing. Yeah. Holy but, shit. But in the US, if you win the lotto, you either get to choose, you either get a lump sum of, uh, it was $17 million before taxes, 
so if that's like I think about 56% yeah. of whatever, you get a lump sum, or instead you get 30 annual payments totaling 30 million. Payments. Yeah. Payments, payments. Well, yeah. he took the lump sum and then oh, after, honey, after, no. <laughs> after taxes, he was left with about 11 million. Okay. Oh. So we don't have to pay taxes on our lotto. Really? No, we don't pay taxes on our lotto, but <gasps> in the US they do. The thing that I always, anytime anyone says lotto, I think of the guy who, this is an Australian dude, who won lotto and then like a news team got him to recreate it. It's like from the 90s. It's mm-hmm. really old school. Like you can see it on YouTube if you search this. Um, he went to recreate it with a scratchy because that's what he won on. And he scratched it on the news thing and he just stared and he's like, I've won again. And then he calls his wife and he's like, love, but he tries to convince his wife over the phone that he's won lottery and she just won't believe it. It's the most <laughs> Australian so lovely. thing. lovely. Yes. He's just an ochre old Aussie man. It's so sweet. So he moved out of his working class neighborhood mm-hmm. um, in Lakeland, Florida and went into a gated community. So living it up. Mm-hmm. Nice. So the co-worker... Michael Ford later approached Shakespeare demanding a share of the jackpot of oh. Oh. even though it wasn't his money but he physically oh, went and brought Ford. the tickets oh. and then he even went to sue Shakespeare in attempting uh, saying that he's stolen the tickets from his oh, wallet <gasps> so Shakespeare won the, the, lawsuit? Court, the lawsuit without oh. too much hassle Fair. Um, yeah no um, Shakespeare was a very generous man he doesn't seem to have purchased a lot for himself. Like, he brought a house, a couple of cars. Uh, even, it, like, the Rolex he brought was used. It was secondhand. Hmm. To be fair, I would also be doing that shit. I don't think I can break these thrifty habits that no. I've gotten into. They're ingrained <laughs> in us. Yeah. So, according to the St. Petersburg Times, he gave his stepfather one million. Oh. His three stepsisters, 250000 apiece. Oh. Paid off an eight hundred uh, one hundred and eighty five thousand mortgage for a friend. Mm. Paid off a sixty thousand mortgage for another man whose last name he didn't even know. Oh. He paid off fifty three thousand uh, for another mortgage of a dude who's been in the neighbourhood and who he'd known for years. He gave his brother's son's best friend forty grand. Wow. He gave his mother twelve grand. His sister ten grand. And wrote checks to friends, paid for funerals, that oh kind of thing. Oh. Come through, Shakespeare. Um, friends stated that Shakespeare had grown frustrated with the apparent constant appeals for money from both strangers and hangers-on. Oh. He told his brother, I'd have been better off broke. Mm. And told a childhood friend that I thought all these people were my friends. But then I realised that they were just there for the money. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, no surprise, within about two and a half years after the lottery win, most of the money was gone. Yeah. yeah. So, one of these strangers is this cunt <laughs> called <laughs> Doris or Dee Dee Moore. Oh, Dee Dee. Dee Dee. <sighs> she befriended Shakespeare back in 2008, saying that she wanted to write a book about his life. Dee Dee also said that she was a financial advisor, uh, and she became his financial advisor, and she gave herself a million dollars of his money. Fucking hell, Dee Dee. She then brought herself a Hummer. A Corvette and a truck before going on vacation. Uh, she later claimed that the money was a gift from Shakespeare. So she's a con artist. Fuck yeah. So <laughs> Dee Dee claimed um, Shakespeare wanted to walk out of his life, get rid of all the problems he'd required as a lottery winner, and she helped him by paying him 870000 for his assets, a lot less than what his assets were worth. His yeah. house alone was $1 million. Uh, Fun fact about Dee Dee. She has a criminal record. Of course she fucking does. No way. Back in 2001, she owed uh, more money on her SUV than it was actually worth. <laughs> so she decided to collect on the insurance. So she went to the cops, claimed that she had been carjacked and gang raped by four Hispanic <gasps> men with tattoos. Oh, oh Dee Dee. Uh, investigators they didn't fly with no, the cops at all. Um, the investigators claimed that she taped her wrist and threw herself uh, from someone else's car to make a scene. Um, she even went so far into her delusion that she even took a rape rape exam, which oh. are incredibly invasive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she was actually charged with falsifying a crime that time. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's just, oh my God. She's so fucking deluded. And Please she's tell me Abraham's like, I see what you are. Mm. Oh, oh, that tone does not seem so, well. So on November 2000, uh, 2009, Shakespeare's family reported him missing, stating that they had actually not seen him since April of that year. So soon after Shakespeare disappeared, 
Dee Dee started living in Shakespeare's house. Oh, fuck off, Dee Dee. Oh, no. Dee Dee claimed that Shakespeare decided to live, uh, leave town and went to Texas or Jamaica or Puerto Rico or Orlando or Florida. Just any of those places. Or was, or was sick in hospital. Okay. Um, Dee Dee even claimed that Shakespeare was so sick of people asking him for money, so she helped him to leave town. All this time, Shakespeare, using quotation marks here, kept using his phone and sending text messages to all his friends and relatives, which is suspicious considering that he was illiterate. Oh! oh. oh. The plot thickens. While attempting to mislead everybody with the texts, Dee Dee was looking for somebody to blame. She offered 50 grand initially, but then the sum went up to $200,000 eventually. <laughs> she offered to pay someone to dig up the body and move it to another location. Right? So the police are suspicious as fuck. So they arranged for Greg Smith, a close friend of Dee Dee, to become an informer. He carried a recorder in his pocket whenever they met, and all the while helping her to try and evade arrest. Um, so Smith arranged for Moore, or Dee Dee, to meet a fool guy who was, who was willing to falsify evidence, falsely confess to the killing of Shakespeare, because he was already headed uh, to prison for 25 years on a drug charge. Smith and Dee Dee negotiated a uh, payment and it would cover all the man's purchases at the prison canteen for life, as long as he was in there. Cup ramen for life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the fall guy was an undercover Lake Wales police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Love it. Yeah. She's heard showing uh, the police officer oh, uh, the grave on her property uh, she gave him a shovel and a diagram showing him how to dig at an angle under the concrete slab rather than just go straight down, mm. right? She brought along a cattle trough and told the informer to pour kerosene into it and burn Shakespeare's mummified corpse, even telling the informer to bring marshmallows. Oh, oh my goodness. Dee Dee. You trash. Absolutely. So um, the next day the detectives arrested her. Yeah, <laughs> naturally. Um, Shakespeare's body was found uh, under, buried under five feet of dirt under a newly constructed concrete slab at her boyfriend's house. Um, and he was 43. So Dee Dee, very fucking delusioned, <laughs> Dee Dee told police a lot of versions of what happened to Shakespeare after they found his body. Um, like drug dealers killing him, she killed him in defence, a lawyer killed him. <laughs> Then she blamed her 14-year-old son for the death. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, Dee Dee claims that she's innocent, completely humiliated by police. She was actually really pissed off that they went and searched her house, which was his house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That ain't your house. Um, she just, Have she fully maintains that she's just trying to help a friend out. Dee Dee offered the ex-girlfriend of Shakespeare a $200,000 home if she would lie to detectives and tell that she, if she'd seen him recently. She also paid a relative of Shakespeare's five grand to give his mother a birthday card implying it was from him. Had they already found his body by this point or is this before then? This is before. Oh. Like, she's just can't yeah. deal with it. Not it's her just, problem. There's too many threads here to ever all of them to stick. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. what a psycho. So... <laughs> It's like she's watched a bunch of episodes of CSI yeah. and she's like, I'll just do them all. Yeah. I'll just Some, do all the yeah. shit that these people did. Something mm -hmm. will stick if I just keep throwing them. Yeah. <laughs> she is so, like, she's so delusioned. Mm. So delusioned. Oh my God. Any interviews you watch with her, mm -hmm. she believes her own shit. She really <gasps> fucking does. Holy shit. Um, still maintains that she's innocent to this day. Bullshit. Um, my whole yeah. So the detectives say that Shakespeare died from a gunshot wound on April 6th or 7 in his home. Um, on the 10th, uh, 2012, December 10th, 2012, Dee Dee Moore was uh, convicted of first degree murder for the killing of Abraham Shakespeare and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole with an additional minimum sentence of 25 years for possessing a gun in the course of a violent felony, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 25 years for, for possessing a gun and uh, six years is like probably rape. Yeah. yeah. Um, following the verdict, Judge Emmett Battles called her the most manipulative person he'd ever seen, describing her as cold, calculating, and cruel. Dee Dee has been profiled as a pathological liar, and to this day, Dee Dee insists uh, on her innocence, regardless of the tons of evidence against her. Poor Abraham. Mm hmm. It's actually terrifying that one person is capable of all of that. Like, that's. Terrifying. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. And he probably was like, "This is my friend." 
Yeah. This whole time. He's like, oh, she's helping me. Sweet mm-hmm. Abraham. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So I got my sources yeah. <laughs> from uh, Murderpedia. Thank oh, you, Murderpedia. Blessing. Yes. Uh, actually, a blog called charlieross.wordpress.com, uh, Tampa Bay, uh, news.com, um, which has full write ups of that's happened at every trial, every retrial. Oh, cool. Like um, yeah, so Dee Dee can suck a dick. Basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Uh, Abraham and <laughs> Bernard Howe, Dee Dee. Yeah, and so that's actually. Cool. I think it was earlier this year or late last year, Abraham's uh, ex-girlfriend, the one that was offered the yeah. $200,000 home to, um, you know, lie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually, he, had a, he has a kid with her. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, she just won one million in a scratch card. Oh. oh. I mean, mm-hmm. what do you say? Uh, Jeez. Yeah. Still yeah. not opposed to winning the lottery. After no. All this, though. Look. <laughs> I'd splash out and be prepared for some crop, like, horrible shit to happen to me. Yeah. Don't know if I want to go as hard as Abraham did. Um, that's sad. Just don't yeah. befriend anyone with. Uh... You become a hermit, eh? Yeah. No DDs, no new friends. Yeah, get out of here, DDs. Anyone with like two letters yeah. <laughs> as their name. I mean, DD Blanchard. Oh, get guys! Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Look at me with those blank faces. <laughs> oh, guys. Dee Dee is always the villain. I'm a sieve. I don't know. I'd like to hear about stuff, but I don't retain it. It just falls yeah. out of me. So we need to record it. So it, it's, it's Do static. Do something really fucking dumb? Yes. No, I do. When you were like, I'm a sieve, and I was like, I thought she was bi. <laughs> <laughs> what would a sieve be? I don't fucking know. I was like, maybe think of like sieve. I like it. <laughs> GPTQ and sieve. Yeah, <laughs> Anything can go through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's small enough, it'll oh, be fine. Oh, um, on that note. <laughs> yeah. Shall we wrap it up? <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's get out of here, Hags. Let's be done with yeah. this. When shall we three meet again? What was it? The In 20s. Thunder, storm, and rain. I used to know it. That's the end of that quote, by the way. I'm not going to retain it. I've literally <laughs> just explained Sip. how stupid I am. <laughs> the, t- the 27th of December. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds doable. Let's do it. Um, Christmas will be done. So mm-hmm. we can have a creepy mess. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye, witches. Goodbye. Bye.